Vim Deer Milliliter CA Smart Pack එක රුපියල් 85ට දැන් වෙලඳ පොලේ. හරිම සුබදුයි. Tonight on First at Nine, this Saturday, the 4th of March 2023. According to plan, Central Bank's policy rate hike depicts its commitment to inflation targeting framework, an important part in the bailout program, points out IMF's Peter Brewer and Mazahiro Nozaki. Compliance Government respects the Supreme Court decision on funding local government polls says State Minister of Finance Ranjit Siambalapitiya. Local resources. President Ranil Vikramasinghe calls for officials to swiftly revive the Trincomalee oil tank farm and implement the Trincomalee development program. Shifting powers. Experts say that while the use of the Indian rupee will benefit the local economy, studies must be conducted to identify the short to medium term implications and related activities those will be done in Indian rupee so in that context Sri Lanka will also witness some reduction with respect to dollar earning from Adhaderana this is Adhaderana first at nine with Indivari Amuata live from studio 24 in Colombo Alliance Finance Mitru Run Nai Sevave Run Pong Kata Propel Ek Laksha Hatta Daha Saka Eela Tikaram And a warm welcome. We take you straight to your top story tonight. The International Monetary Fund today commended the Central Bank's announcement yesterday to raise policy interest rates saying it shows CBSL's commitment to reduce inflation more quickly and firmly towards the single-digit target. The international lender said the move is in line with objectives set under inflation targeting framework, an important part of the disinflation strategy under the IMF Extended Fund Facility Program. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka yesterday announced that it would raise key policy rates by 100 basis points. Accordingly, the standing deposit facility rate was raised to 15.5%, while the standing lending facility rate was increased to 16.5%. In response to media queries on IMF's comments to the CBSL's rate hikes, Senior Mission Chief for Sri Lanka Peter Brewer and IMF Mission Chief for Sri Lanka Masahiro Nozaki said that the decision is appropriate and in line with the objectives set under the inflation targeting framework. They said that this reflects the CBSL's commitment to the inflation target and is an important part of the disinflation strategy in the EFF bailout program for Sri Lanka. They added that even though Sri Lanka's inflation is declining, it remains at a very high level, which has been disproportionately hurting the poor. The IMF authorities point out that the Sri Lankan central bank's decision to raise policy rates shows its commitment to reduce inflation more quickly and firmly, towards a single-digit target given that upside inflation risks could reverse the trend leading to persistently high inflation, which is extremely costly to the economy. Brewer and Nozaki added that durable disinflation would help boost market confidence, reduce excessive risk premia, and ease the financing conditions for the corporates, especially the small and medium enterprises, which supports recovery. The central bank said yesterday it raised its policy rates in order to meet the requirements of IMF's extended fund facility program, but assured that the monetary board and the IMF staff reached a consensus to raise the policy interest rates in a smaller magnitude compared to the adjustment envisaged during the initial stage of negotiations. Foreign Minister Ali Sabri held wide-ranging talks with his Indian counterpart S. Jai Shankar on, uh, uh, in India, focusing on facilitating Sri Lanka's economic recovery as well as boosting bilateral trade. Now, Foreign Ministry, Minister Sabri described the meeting as constructive. Taken to Twitter, Dr. Jai, Sang Jai Shankar said uh, that his counterpart Ali Sabri and himself took stock of India-Sri Lanka cooperation that is focusing on facilitating Sri Lanka's economic recovery and that discussions covered investment, trade and development partnership between India and Sri Lanka.
State Minister of Finance Ranjit Siamala Pitya says the government will comply with the Supreme Court determination on local government elections and funds to be released in line with allocations of the budget. We need to respect the decision of the Supreme Court, be it the Minister of Finance, the government or a private institution. It is everybody's responsibility to understand the court ruling and act accordingly. I don't see any problem with this, because as the Minister of Finance, we will be taking the necessary steps to proceed as instructed. It is everybody's responsibility to act accordingly in respect of the Supreme Court decision. We will have to line up the funds necessary in line with the order of the Supreme Court. Leader of the Samagi Jana Balavegya, Sajid Premadasa points out that all efforts by the President to prevent the local government election has been prevented with the interim order issued by the Supreme Court. Speaking at an election campaign rally in Akmi Mana, Premadasa said the Supreme Court has essentially declared the truth to the country. An election campaign rally of Samagi Jana Balavegya got underway in Akmi Mana yesterday under the patronage of its party leader Sajid Premadasa. When the president repeatedly says there is no election in the country, the Supreme Court has very clearly informed the finance minister and the ministry secretary that it is prohibited to withhold funds for the elections. In other words, it is necessary to allocate funds for the elections. I hope you all recall the remarks made in parliament. It was stated that the MPs of the SJB requested the president not to hold an election at all. I would like to state that the interim order issued by the Supreme Court was based on a fundamental rights petition filed by SJB General Secretary Ranjit Madhuma Bandara. The Supreme Court has revealed to us what the truth is and what is false. National People's Power leader Anura Kumara Disanayaka points out that if the Secretary to the Treasury does not abide by the Supreme Court interim order preventing the withholding of funds earmarked for elections, he will be held in contempt of court. Addressing an election campaign rally, the JVP leader said his coalition will somehow overcome challenges ahead for a poll's victory. An election campaign rally of the National People's Power was held in Tissa Maharamia yesterday under the patronage of its party leader, Anurukumar Disanayaka. Why are hundreds of people gathered here even when they know that there will not be an election on the 9th of March? You are all gathered here with the utmost hope and great expectation to not give up and carry forward until victory. The Supreme Court today gave an order prohibiting the Treasury from withholding funds allocated via the budget. As scheduled, the Election Commission should hold polls on the 9th. However, even though the scheduled date is the 9th, it is not possible to hold polls then. Ballot papers should be printed. The Election Commission should declare a sooner date for this election. If the Secretary to the Treasury doesn't abide by the court order, he will be found in contempt of court. This is not the end. They will put forth more and more obstacles, but the NPP will somehow overcome them and win the election. Well, the Executive Committee of the Sri Lanka Puthujana Peramuna has decided to remove Professor G.L. Pires from his post as the chairman of the party. SLPP General Secretary Sagar Akariyavasam stated that the decision was taken unanimously by the Executive Council at a meeting recently. He added that the former Education Minister did not attend the Executive Council meeting despite being invited. In writing, the SLPP is reportedly considering suitable persons for the now vacant position, not excluding the possibility of a reputed and accepted individual among civil society, being appointed as its chairman. Commenting on this regard, Sagar of Karyavasam confirmed that the Executive Council is scheduled to meet next uh, during the upcoming week and that a decision pertaining to the matter will be taken then. President Ranul Vikrama Singh directed officials to swiftly revive the Trincomalee oil tank farm by renovating the 61 tanks of the upper tank farm and implementing the Trincomalee development program was also instructed. President issued the directive during an inspection of the Trincomalee upper tank farm, which is currently being renovated by the Trinco Petroleum Terminal Private Limited, a joint venture of the Ceylon Petroleum and Sri Lanka arm, the Sri Lankan arm of Indian Oil Corporation. 
President Ranil Vikram Singh engaged in inspection tour of the Lanka Indian Oil Company's oil tank farm area in Trincomalee yesterday. During the visit, the President was briefed by LIOC Managing Director Manoj Gupta on operations of the oil tank farm. President Vikram Singh highlighted the urgency of implementing the Trincomalee Development Program by renovating the 61 tanks of the upper tank farms and directed the Petroleum Minister and officials to swiftly carry out a plan to revive the Trincomalee oil tank farm and commission it for the benefit of the national economy. He also visited LIOS's lubricant blending plant at Trincomalee, which fulfills the country's lubricating oil needs at the annual capacity of 18,000 kilolitres. Meanwhile, the delegation led by the President paid a visit to Sri Lanka's first locally developed grease manufacturing plant, which has the potential to meet Sri Lanka's demand for grease entirely, eliminating grease imports. While inspecting LIOS's Bowser filling facility, the President expressed appreciation of the LIOS's service in ensuring a consistent supply of fuel amid a crisis in the country. And to find out what experts think of conducting Indian rupee denominated bilateral trade, we'll come back with your story after this short break. To stay with us. Recently, the High Commission of India organized a multi-stakeholder discussion on the use of the Indian rupee for bilateral trade. And the discussion um, went forward on how Sri Lanka and India can collaborate in this regard. The discussion came at a time when several local and international banks have already opened divorce accounts with Indian counterparts to overcome the economic shocks following the pandemic and the war in Ukraine. Speaking to other Therana banking experts, Sujiva Rajapaksa highlighted that the rationale of the move might be to popularize the Indian rupee, but economist Dr. Priyanka Dunusingh has stated that while Sri Lanka will benefit from this trade mechanism amid the current dollar shortage, studies into the new trade mechanism's medium to long-term implications will have to be conducted. The High Commission of India recently organized a discussion on the use of the Indian national rupee for economic transactions between India and Sri Lanka, where representatives from the Bank of Ceylon, State Bank of India and the Indian Bank shared their experiences and informed the audience that they had started carrying out INR-denominated trade transactions through respective Vostra Nostra accounts after the creation of the enabling framework by the Reserve Bank of India and the Central Bank of Sri Lanka in 2022. The participating banks also outlined the benefits of the settlements denominated in the Indian national rupee, which includes shorter timelines, lower exchange costs and easy availability of trade credits. The beneficial impact of this initiative on the tourism and hospitality industry was also highlighted, including its role in helping increase collections which could be utilised by other sectors. A Vostra account in Indian currency would enable Sri Lanka to import from India without dipping into its dollar supply. The Indian Rupee Vostra facility is part of a special trade settlement mechanism which was finalised by the Reserve Bank of India in July 2022. The arrangement allows the Indian importers to deposit Indian national rupees into Vostra accounts that overseas banks opened with banks in India and clearing of dues to Indian exporters from the surplus balances in the Vostra accounts. Meanwhile, speaking to other Derna, Chairman of the People's Bank, Sujiva Rajapaksha, stated that the rationale of the Vostra Nostra accounts might be to popularize the Indian rupee while pointing out the present status of the operations of the Nostra accounts at the People's Bank. A central bank of Sri Lanka has gazetted the INR, that is Indian rupees, as the designated currency. So before, as Sri Lanka had only 14 designated currencies. With this INR, it becomes now 15. The rationale probably in this would be to popularize the INR among other countries by the Indian government. People's Bank has commenced INR Nostra account, which is important for international relationships, with HDFC Bank in India. Uh, this opportunity is given to other banks as well. Uh, through Nostra account, uh, which is generally used for, again, international transactions, our businesses can now open letter of credits and execute telegraphic transfers, etc., between India and Sri Lanka. And People's Bank is in the process of extending INR currency acceptance from Indian travelers who come to Sri Lanka, uh, mainly at the airport. Uh, if Sri Lankan customers are willing to accept INR, then uh, Indian traders, uh, they can execute business transactions in INR as well. 
The INR Vostro account is considered as a tool to either overcome restrictions in the wake of US sanctions on Russian banks or continue cross-border trades amid a hard currency crisis. Economist Dr. Priyanka Dunisinga highlighted the key implications of this new system on the Sri Lankan economy. Basically, India has started a new trading arrangement with its trading partners, mainly in response to the trading activities India started with Russia. So India is looking at uh, basically widening that facility to other countries where Indian currency could be uh, utilized in trading activities uh, instead of US dollars. Now, in fact, Sri Lanka had a one-to-one -one, uh, convertibility between the Indian rupee and Sri Lankan rupee before 1950s. Similarly, India had the similar arrangements with some African countries as a less Middle East. So, it, in fact, India wants to utilize these new trading arrangements to spread it to the other countries so as to reduce the dependency on on US dollar. So India cannot just uh, confine to one country in order to carry out activities. India wants to get some more countries where India has trade surpluses as well as trade deficits in order to carry out these transactions. That is what India is trying to do. Indian rupee is going to be the US dollar in the South Asian region. And already there are around 35 countries uh, that are in line in order to utilize Indian rupee in their transactions. Sri Lanka has already agreed to do so. Sri Lanka has created deficit in, with India in that context. Certainly Sri Lanka will benefit in a crisis like this, where we have the dollar deficit in carrying out trading activities. However, it is important to examine its impact in the medium to loan run. At the same time, whatever the, the exports that we make to India and tourism related activities as well as investment related activities, those will be done in Indian rupee. So in that context, Sri Lanka will also witness some reduction with respect to dollar earning as well. Given the fact that Indian economy is booming and it is expected that it will be a, a bigger economy in years to come, it is important that Sri Lanka basically expand its economic relationship with India. Well, oil prices recovered yesterday from a brief sell-off to gains by more than one dollar per barrel and ended the week higher driven by renewed optimism around demand from top oil importer china meanwhile both brent and west texas intermediate benchmarks posted their highest closing levels yesterday since the 13th of last month brent crude futures rose by 1.3 percent to settle at 85 dollars and 83 cents a barrel while u.s west texas intermediate crude futures was up by 1.9 percent and settled at 79 dollars and 68 cents a barrel both benchmarks posted their highest closing levels since the 13th of last month brent and west texas intermediate notched their third biggest weekly percentage gains this year as strong chinese economic data hopes for oil demand growth china's service sector activity in the last month expanded at the fastest pace in six months and manufacturing activity also grew Further, China's seaborne imports of Russian oil are set to hit a record high this month. China, the world's top oil importer, is getting more ambitious with its 2023 growth target, aiming as high as 6%. However, oil market broadly shrugged off a 10th consecutive week of U.S. crude stockpile builds, while record exports of U.S. crude lent more support to prices. Meanwhile, the dollar weakened and analysts polled by Reuters expect the greenback to be under pressure over the next 12 months, which would make dollar-denominated oil cheaper for holders of other currencies. And that wraps up tonight's edition of First at Nine. I'm Indivari Amwatha. Good night. and information you can trust 24 hours a day visit adaverna.lk